Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa salim. Na'awati ta'alim wa ta'alim wa tadakura wa tadzkir wa naf'a wa lintifa' wa nifarata wa istifada wa lahasa ala tamasuki bi kitabillahi wa sunnati rasulihi sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa salam wa du'a'a ila al-huda wa dalalata al-khair ibtigha'a wa jillah wa maradatihi wa qurbihi wa thawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'an lutfin wa afiyatin birahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma inna nasadika ilma laduni wa mashraba sufi al-hani ya wahab ya ghani Allahumma inna nasadika ilma laduni wa mashraba sufi al-hani ya wahab ya ghani Allahumma inna nasadika ilma laduni wa mashraba sufi al-hani ya wahab ya ghani sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salam walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin alhamdulillah Alright, so we are on the on the on the section of this book, right, whereby the book speaks about the perfection of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, as mentioned before, we we see, uh, we learn about the perfection of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? Not because we will any in any way be exactly like Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but we see the perfect example so that we can strive right for the ideal. Right? So he is a he is a man of uh you know ideal character, ideal physical characteristics. He is of uh, idle speech and idle actions. Right? So we strive, we learn all this is about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not that we can ever be like Rasulullah Sallallahu or even close to him, right? but it's so that we can see what is the perfect uh, human being, right? and that, that we can actually strive and uh, you know, uh, uh, strive against ourselves right? to, to, to somehow or other emulate something of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And even if you're able to emulate even a fraction of what he, is, he, what he was about, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Right, that would be you know that will make us one of the best human beings you know uh, walking in our time, right? So just just take on one or two or three you know a few attributes of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? That would uh, really uh, cause you to 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 reach, you know, a form of uh, tranquility and closeness to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The more you are like Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we 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 mentioned that Rasulullah Sallam is the perfect human being. Right, and of his uh, perfection, right, the scholars have be, have have based his perfection upon four different uh, elements. Right, so they are perfection in his perfection in his creation. That means his physical well, his physical uh, features. Right, it, they are perfect the way he, the way he was. Right, uh, and in a, in a, in a in a poem, right, say in a Hassan al Basri, no, say in a Hassan uh, bin bin Thabit, right, whereby he said to, about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right, you are so perfect in your creation. It means your, your your looks, you know, your your physical being is so perfect. It's as if you were created however you wished. Right, because if if like for us, you know, if we were to be given a choice, like what would you teach about yourself? You know, you want your eyes in, in some way, your nose in some way, your eye, your mouth in some way, or whatsoever. People try to change things that they are about themselves. So Rasulullah was so perfect, it's as if, you know, he, he you know, however he wished to be, that was how he was. I said, Allah, who Allah, he was, in his perfect, in his perfect uh, attribute. And we know that he is more beautiful than Nabi Yusuf, alayhi salam, whereby uh, he himself said in a hadith that Yusuf was given half of beauty. And I have been given all of beauty. Uh, so, so, but the, the 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 full manifestation of the beauty of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is hidden from us. Uh, we can only see a glimpse of his real beauty, uh, because his his full beauty Allah has hidden from us. Because otherwise, nobody will be able to interact with him, because of how beautiful he he is really, and uh, nobody will be able to sit and and listen to him because of how stunned they are uh, by the beauty of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even by Nabi Yusuf Alaihi Wasallam, it went for him. The woman who, who were in his company, right, they couldn't see past his looks. Right? They, they were just so stunned right, by Nabi Yusuf uh, alaihi salam's looks, right? So for Rasulullah salam, Allah has uh, mercy on us and He has has covered uh, uh, most of His beauty. Right? Inshallah, in the next world, right, His beauty will manifest to its uh, uh, to its extent, right? To its full extent, it will manifest. So the second thing is the perfection in the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that is the one that we will uh, focus on more. Right, in how in how great the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right, and then in part of the character there are two parts, right, there is speech and there is action, right. So when you look at the character of Rasulullah sallam, you're going to look at two specific parts: how he used to speak and how he used to behave with the people, right. And if we want to improve ourselves as human beings, we need to look into uh, the the perfection of Rasulullah sallam's speech and the perfection of Rasulullah sallam's actions, right. So last week is all uh, revision, eh? So two weeks ago we took the first attribute. 
right, which is uh, the perfection in, in the creation. Right, and it's the perfection in creation, right, there are four attributes that, 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 that uh, the, the, the Sheikh has listed for us. Right? Four attributes about the perfection in the creation of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, if you want to do like a mind map or whatsoever, you know, you can you can see everything out lah. Right? You know, so there are four perfect, uh, perfect traits: like creation, character, from character, speech, and actions. So, of creation, there are four attributes. Right, four attributes all around. Right? so the first attribute is sakina, tranquility, right? and that is considered to be part of his physical attribute. Right, part of the physical, even though it is also part of the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, but the scholars here, right, they put it as part of his physical ap- attribute, right, because the way he was physically. So when you saw him, he was always at peace. Right, he was not, you know, agitated. He was not always anxious, worried, right, uh, uh, perturbed. Right, uh, he 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 was very, a very calm and also a very stable person, right, and that is a virtue. Right, to be a stable person, you know, not to be someone who will erupt and everything, you know, or go in or break into tears and everything, you know, like like, like you are just so sensitive that whatever people say, you get hurt. Right, so that kind of person, you know, you, that you have, you are you are lacking in some way, right, in your personality right, or in your physical uh, characteristics that you get, whatever people say to you, you get angry, you get upset, you get you get you get you get hurt. Right, how to live, you know, in that way, you know, how can you be progressive and be 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 beneficial to other people if you're going to be very emotional? Right, being emotional it, it it paralyzes you, right? From actually being objective and right, what is going on around you. So all of Rasulullah uh, uh, perfect attributes is sakina. That means he is stable, he is tranquil, and right? he does not uh, you know uh, 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 react, you know, or jump into conclusion or go into uh, some sort of you know uh, wild uh, emotions right, when something happens to him. Right, but he will pause, he will think about it, reflect, and that is how the believer should be. When things happen to you, right, you, 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 you stop yourself. You hold yourself at that point right, and, and then you let it process and then you react in calculated steps. Right? That, is a, that, is, that is the height, the height of, of that character. Right? That you're able to hold yourself and, 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 and survey what's going on right, and think right, what is the best thing that, uh, that, that you could actually do at this point. Right? So Sakina, tranquility, uh, the first attribute. This quality inspires reverence, veneration, Right, submission and surrender. Right, so inspires reverence for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, veneration, right, awe of him. Right, people, people to to to, to be to be uh, mesmerized by Rasulullah sallam or to be awe to be awed by him. And this is what you will see for students when they see a teacher, right, who is always calm, right, always composed, stable. Right, you tend to uh, command respect. Right, students tend to be more respectful of a teacher. Right, that you're able to hold yourself and to judge things logically. You know, or respectfully, right, without or res- respectably, without without having to, without jumping into conclusions, right? So 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 or, or without being emotional about things, right? So a teacher who is like something happens and you get very emotional about it, right? Straight away, it is very quick that the students will lose respect for you, right? Because you begin you 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 start to to, to be you know uh, irrational right, about things. Same thing with a parent, a parent who is rational, right? Who is composed. Uh, uh, firm and and uh, at at peace with himself and stable, right? The children will begin to see, right? That you know, my father, if he if he knows something, he won't flip, you know. But he will actually just okay, right? And then he will talk to me about it, right? Advice, I right? lay out the plan, right? What to do from this point on, right? So basically, like a parent who does that will gain much more respect, right, from the child and more trust also. As opposed to a parent who, when he hears something, the child knows. If my father hears of this, that's it. You know, like I get thrown out of the house, or I get, I get, you know, I get, I get, I get uh, disowned, or I get, you know, like rash behavior, right? you know, or something. You don't even think first before you do something. And so, so some he was so so for us to to to, to strive right, towards this attribute of holding yourself, being in peace right, before you actually react to things. And it is part of his physical characteristics. Eh? It's not part of his akhlaq. It's part of the physical characteristics of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi And this will inspire reverence, veneration, submission and surrender. Uh, people will begin to take you seriously. Uh, because you're not a joke, lah, basically. <laughs> uh, it's somebody who is, uh, who is always very you know, rash in their, in, their res- in their response to things. People begin to not take you seriously. Because you're, you're, you, just, you, become, you, go into, you fly into rage. Right? Or you fly into, uh, you become so emotional. And then you 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 can't, you can't think straight, 
Uh, so even your own children will begin to after a while I can't talk to you <laughs> if I try to consult you with anything you just go into emotions you go into rage you go into anger you go into like I can't even consult you <laughs> on anything so Rasulullah Sallam he was someone like that whereby no matter what people can come to him and say in his face you know I committed zina I committed adultery I committed, I committed. he can just you know be composed he will have like what what's wrong with you why are you you know like like you know scream at that person are you crazy are you you know like can't you can't you hold yourself like nothing. He just holds himself and says, okay, right? If she has committed adultery and she's pregnant, go back home until you give birth. Right? Very calm response. <laughs> right? They didn't flip whatsoever. Right? Or they didn't even you know, get, get angry with the woman or, or how could you, you are a married woman or whatsoever. Nothing. Just go right? and until you give birth. After you have given birth, come back. Right? That's all, the law. Right? He just gave the law. Right, very, very sakina lah, very composed right, in how he executes the judgment right, without any emotions being involved. Right? But of course, you see when, 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 when people uh, deliberately they disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they don't know that they are disobeying Allah, I mean, or, or, they, or they deliberately disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they know they are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will see him show anger. But even then, he holds himself. Right, like in a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right, when he was mentioned, we mentioned it previously that when he was uh, dividing the the wealth right in the middle of her name, right, and someone said, "This is not fair," right, in his face, "This is not fair," and the face of Allah is not sought in what you are doing. Right, and someone, so someone in your face says to you, right, "You are not being fair, and you don't care to please Allah in what you are doing." <laughs> right, if your child comes to you and says that to you. It comes to you and you're giving out things to your children and your older child says, you are not being fair and you don't have any taqwa of Allah. So, <laughs> like you get very angry with anybody who dares say that. Right? I mean, even though if it's true, right? but also, also, so, 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 and he's a prophet of Allah. So therefore, definitely, he is being fair and he is doing it out of wisdom. He said the, God, the person who said it did not understand what was the wisdom. So at first when he said it, Rasulullah said, who is fair if, I'm not, if Allah and his prophet is not fair? He just said that, you know, who is fair if Allah and his prophet is not fair? And then he held himself. So he didn't even, he didn't even, he didn't even burst. He didn't even get angry. He just said that first as, as a response. If, if I'm not fair, then who is fair? Right? If you want to talk about fairness. And then he held himself and he said, May Allah have mercy on Musa. He got worse than this. <laughs> That's all. That was it. And he, he just kept quiet thereafter. <laughs> Like it just there's, there's no there's no you know backlash there's no you know call the person let me scold him you know, nothing in fact he said that to the one who gave him the, the news that someone said it so Ibn Mas'ud was the one who came and said that so and so said that you're not being fair and that means he was the one who relayed the message so he didn't say call that person here I'm going to talk to that person nothing he just responded you know how can it be that they say that then he stopped himself Nabi Musa got worse Okay, <laughs> that was it. They didn't, even, they didn't even do anything about it. And in fact, the story goes on. You see his character, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The story goes on that it began to spread amongst the, the Ansar that Rasulullah Sallam was, was, was favoring the Meccans over the Medinans. It was a big, it was a big issue at that time. Right? Inshallah, in Sira, I'll go through right, uh, in the details of the story. Right? Uh, so, instead of being you know, uh, someone who was like, you know what, I am the Prophet. They should know better than to say such things about me. Like, I am the Prophet of Allah. I know what I'm doing. Like, are you doubting what I'm doing? Like, I mean, is, is someone, someone could say that. He could say that. He could very rightly say that. Are you all Muslims? Like, are you seriously doubting what I'm doing as the Prophet? I mean, you, you, could, scold, you could scold them right, for saying that, oh, he's being unfair, he's, he's, he's uh, prioritizing the Meccans, he's having favoritism towards the Meccans. Right? And they were saying all these things. But what did Rasulullah do? He called them right, and he brought himself low right, in front of them. Right? And he made it seem, there's a law khutbah that he gave, right? but he made it seem as if he was so grateful to them right? for all they have done for him. Right? So instead of scolding them right? for the kind of slander that they were spreading amongst themselves, right? the, kind of, the kind of gossip that was going on about Rasulullah SAW, which is haram, it's one of the major sins that they were actually doing, but they, were, they fell into it. Instead of doing any of that, he understood where the sentiments were coming from. Right? One thing, they didn't understand what was going on. Why was he giving the Meccans more? They didn't understand the, 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 the hikmah behind it. So he had to explain himself. Uh, even though by right, he should not have to explain himself. Because he's the prophet. Uh, he can do whatever he wants to do. Even if there's no reason behind it, he can do it. Because uh, he's the prophet. He's, he, he acts on the way of, or, or, on the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody has any, has any, any right to question what he's doing. 
Right, but still, he brought himself down. He explained to them. You know, he said, like, apparently, like, you can do whatever you want to do. It's your house. You know, you can, you can put things over you want to put things. Right? And your children, they start to, 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 to argue with you. It's not their house. It's your house. <laughs> right? It's your room. It's your, you know, it's your stuff. Right, but you know what? He said, you know what? I'll explain to you. You know, it means, you, you, it means you're doing more for them than what they actually, what is their right. It's not their right that you, do, you explain things to them. Right? There's, no, there's, no, there's no right in there. Right? But also he brought himself down and he explained himself. Right? And he, uh, he humbled himself right, in front of them. Right? And he, he made it seem as if he was in need of them. Right? And, that, and, that, and there's a long story lah, about the, the khutbah of Rasulullah SAW. So there you see, right, something, somebody was perturbing him in that way. Right, the saying things that, that could hurt the normal human being would, would be would be very upset if somebody were to say to you, you know, have fear of Allah. Right, you know, aren't you afraid of Allah? You know, if someone said that to you, you know, in our time, in the in the previous times they will be they will be very grateful if someone said, said to them, you know, have fear of Allah. I right, thank you for reminding me. Right, in our time, if you say to somebody have fear of Allah, they'll be like, You have fear of Allah, <laughs> not me. I'm okay. You you don't have taqwa. I have taqwa. <laughs> and then people people become defensive. They won't like they, they, or, or they will reject people who try to say have fear of Allah. What you're doing is not right. right subhanallah. So uh, for Rasulullah you know, if people say that to him, right, of of this kind of things, he will just hold himself. Right? Even though he is the one of the highest form of taqwa and the highest form of sabr and the highest form of 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 uh, of justice. Right, but people still say this kind of words to him and he does not even in any way try to uh, punish them or scold them or raise his voice or be, or be angry towards them. So, so, so Rasulullah SAW was most awe-inspiring in the hearts of people just because he's able to keep himself composed. That's all. Right, you, just, you just take this one attribute and you apply it to yourself. Don't react on everything. Just don't. <laughs> Try to hold yourself. You know, your kids come with some news, right? You know, and, and it's sad. They can't, they can't even tell you their marks. Like some, some parents, your kids can't even come and tell you your marks, their marks. What's so wrong with that? They fail, fail lah. It's okay. Try better next time round. It's okay. Right, don't, don't try to. Don't, what does it do when you, like, you know, you, 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 you burst? You know, you get very angry with them right, for, 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 for doing the children. Right, it's okay. Try harder next time. Okay? I don't need to. That's all. Uh, my mother never scolded us for coming back with bad marks, right, ma? I mean, you never scolded us for coming back with bad marks, right? Ever. <laughs> never. <laughs> she just look, okay. <laughs> Try harder next time. That's the trick. That's the trick, right? And, and basically, we were just, we just did our best in our studies, that's all. <laughs> right, but she never, never, right? I never remember her one time scold us about our marks, ever. <laughs> Yeah, you say, why you get something wrong? <laughs> no, even worse, for us, it's not our mother, it's our, our brothers. So they will see our paper, hey, you don't know this one. You, <laughs> you get here wrong. <laughs> what say? <laughs> like my other brother, you'll never hear the end of him getting uh, B3 for his AMATs. <laughs> my family, until now, who got B3 for their AMATs? <laughs> huh? No, 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 no. The, 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 one of my brothers lah. So never hear the end of it. To the point he said that he would rather he got he got an A two for his English. He said he rather have the B three for the English and the A two for the AMS, even though the English was counted in the mark in the points. <laughs> because of the amount of like like teasing that came after, like this is a bad lah. It's really bad lah to actually like. But it counts the siblings. My mother never do anything about it. My mother just <laughs> she never scolds us for our. For our results, you can do whatever, you know, however you fare, you fare lah. Doesn't matter. <laughs> right, so it's yeah, encourage, try your best. You know, but, but whatever's your interest, I mean, I wouldn't say it's, it's blameworthy if a child shows no interest in math. It's not blameworthy. It's it's normal for some people. <laughs> right, some people ah, some people like it, and they can do it all they want. Some people don't like it, right, and I, I won't say it's a bad trait that they have no interest in the subject. It's not a bad trait, right? It's a bad trait if they don't want to pray. That's a bad trait. <laughs> they don't want to fast, they lie, they cheat. Right? These are all bad traits. It's not you get angry about. Right? That's what my mom will get angry about. Right? If you all begin to do our sins. Right? Then what she get, she get upset with us about. Right? But if you don't do well in Malay, right? <laughs> or you don't do well in English, you're not very good, a very good reader, you don't like to read. Right? I mean, people have their own... <laughs> people, some people like to read, some people like to read. You know, it's just, it's just subjects. That's all they are. They are subjects. Right, it doesn't it doesn't make them a better person, 
Uh, that you are better at math or at science, you know. But it makes you a better person if you don't lie, you don't cheat, right? You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, uh, uh, you know, ridicule or whatsoever, eh? and ridiculing eh? of the B three. <laughs> Shouldn't. But it's the thing about, you know, amongst the brothers lah, eh? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay. So, so you see, like, so sorry, when you were saying about, about, about parents and teachers, right, who get upset, right, about results. That means you are, it's as if you are judging your child's character, right, on the results they bring home. Right? That's not their character, right? But you get, you, what you should get upset about, right, if, right, they, do, they are not, they don't have any integrity, right, in what they do. Right, they they lie over and over again, and they are old, you know, people. I know they're like you know, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, you know, teenagers who are just lying blatantly, right, or going somewhere else without telling you and whatsoever. These are things that but you 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 will be more concerned about, right? Then if they were to just have no, they want to drop their math, they don't want to do math anymore, they don't drop their science, they don't do science anymore. It's up to them. It's up to them. Don't force them <laughs> on things, right? And don't think that their 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 future will be ruined, that they have no e math. Right. It's not going to be ruined. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a portion for everybody at risk. Right? And you will get your risk no matter what. Right? So it's not like you, know, you need you know, this subject for you to, to, to survive in the future. <laughs> Allah never put that as a, as, a, as a condition for your risk to come to you. Alhamdulillah. Alright. And I'm not saying that because I hate math. I love math. You all know me. <laughs> I'm just saying it. Right? Alhamdulillah. Uh, uh, so, so he was the most, the most awe-inspiring in the hearts of the people. Even the envoys of Kisro, right, the Persian kings who came to him, trembled out of awe for him. Although he did not display any grandeur, nor did he arrogantly display his power. This was despite their being accustomed to the might of their own kings. Right, so the way Rasam carried himself, and we know this from the way his grandfather Abdul Muttalib carried himself, right? And that even Abraha came off the throne, right, to respect Abdul Muttalib. And all he was was that he was wearing his normal thobe. There was no crown, nothing, like no robe, no bodyguards, nothing. Just his normal normal thobe, and he walked in, right? But they they, they command and respect, right? The way they came, it's called it's called haya. You know, the haiba of 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 the haiba is like they have. If somebody has haiba, that means that person has a uh, like a presence, right? And I, and I think the Malay word hebat comes from it, right? The haiba. Right? I think the Malay word hebat, like so hebat. <laughs> right? They have like this, like how about Noor? So she has a haiba. Right? She walks in, everybody, you know, like you feel something, and you're like, everybody's, everybody's very disciplined now. <laughs> like, no phone, nothing. <laughs> and how about Noor walks into the room, eh? Right? So it's a kind of like haiba, which was some head. I wish I I know I remember that I was gonna get the 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 the, the, the khutbah. I promise you all again, the khutbah on Friday whereby they were mentioned the truth of Rasulullah at the beginning of the khutbah. And then remember I said like, I was gonna get it. No, I forgot. No, I, I just remembered I was gonna get it. Right? Because because every khutbah the the khatib will begin by saying whoever first meets him, right? They will be uh they will they will be intimidated by him by Rasulullah When they begin to love him and get close to him, then they begin to fall in love with Rasulullah Wasallam. Right, so that is the first that the first the first coming in to his presence. There was once a, a, a Bedouin that came into his presence suddenly, right, and he began to shake right, because of the kind of haiba that was some head. Right, he began to shake, right, and then uh, Rasam said, "You know, calm down, calm down, right? For I am uh, the son of a woman right, who used to eat very dry meat. In the sense that I'm I'm not anybody, you know, I'm just." One of you guys, <laughs> right. so don't 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 panic in front of me. <laughs> right. So uh, because he had that presence if was, uh, of of himself, but when you got to know him, when you get to know him, right, he uh, he becomes very beloved, right, to his companions, right. So that is the way. Uh, and you know of teachers who are, who have that, right, that on the on the first account, oh, they're very strict, very they're very scary. Everybody scared of them, right. But when you get to know them, right, you like you know she's she's actually you know quite. Chill, quite quite nice, <laughs> right? But but still, there is still still this haiba that is about them that the students don't cross, right? The students they, they 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 have a respect for her, even though she never raises her voice, she never but she always there's something that she carries that is also of the quality of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The second attribute of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi you know, with his haiba, he has talaqa. Talaqa is cheerfulness, right? Be wajhin taliq, right? And this is part of good character. Part of good character is to always be cheerful. Right, to as far as that means your default state is cheerfulness. Right? Only when you know people go against the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or whatsoever, then you go into uh, 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 displeased state. Or when you are in your own personal worship, you go into serious state. 
Right, so by your default state is what? Cheerfulness. So you don't have to say things make you happy. You are already happy. <laughs> that means you are by default happy. That is your default state. You are happy. Right? And you are happy and you are cheerful with those who are around you. Right? It only things will make you move away from that state. But when those things are done, you go back to the state of being happy. So you don't have to go around trying to make yourself happy. You are happy, right? And then there's, there's a saying, you know, of, of you know, English saying lah, that, you know, I am happy because I think I am. That means you just make yourself happy. Ah. <laughs> right. just, just tell yourself, it's okay, no problem. I'm happy. It's fine. <laughs> right. And that is actually part of good character. That you don't actually hinge your emotions right, on the events that's going on around you and the people who are around you. Right, that means you are you are stable in yourself. It's a happiness in yourself, right? So cheerfulness, this quality inspires devotion and love, right? Devotion and love to the person who has this cheerfulness, and people are naturally attracted to those who are cheerful. Right? Nobody likes somebody who's always masam, you know, sour, bitter. They're always, you know, uh, black face and what's who, who nobody wants to sit around you. <laughs> Like if you're always frowning, 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 frowning. Right, so Rasul Sam, didn't, wasn't somebody who was like that. Right, somebody who was always, people come, marhaban, ahlan wa sahlan, salamualaikum, how are you? Right, how are you today? You know, and make jokes, play. Right, that is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like, like-heartedness. Right. So the sahaba loved and cherished his cheerfulness. Right, they loved how cheerful Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. After a while, followers often disliked some of the attributes they perceive of their leaders, but this was not the case for Rasulullah wasallam. Nobody who accompanied him ever disliked him. Right? No person who was close to him ever distanced himself from him. He was more beloved to his sahaba than their own parents and children. He was more beloved to them than cool water to a thirsty person. It's all from a hadith. Right? That means like, subhanAllah, if, if you, subhanAllah, this, many, most people, the more people know about you, the more they see your faults. Right, and for some people, they can't handle it, they, they turn away from you. Right? For Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right, and, for even, and in fact for the ulama who are on the path of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right, the more you get to know them, right, the more beautiful they are, you see. Right? Because they are the best to those who are close to them. Right? Most human beings, they are the worst to those who are close to them. Right? Their families, their spouses, their, you know, they are the most harsh, they are the most... Uh, crude, they are the most, uh, and this is this is all characteristics of people who are far from the truth of Islam. Now, if you find yourself that the more th- th- you are actually you get actually worse in character to, to those who are very close to you, that is a strong indication that you are very far from the akhlaq of Islam, right? Because by right, the Muslim, right, they are the best to those who are close to them. And those who are closest to you, your parents, your siblings, right, your your spouse, your children, you are the best to them. Right, and as people go further and further away from you in, in, in distance, right, then you know, less and less. Right? But those who are closest see the best of you. Right? Don't be the opposite. Whereby those who are furthest see the best of you. And those who are closest see the worst of you. Right? There, is, there is somebody who is far from the akhlaq of Islam. Right? Very far. Because we know Rasul Islam, his akhlaq is what? And he is the ideal. His akhlaq is what? The closer you get to him, the more beloved he will be to you. Because the more the more he will more goodness he will show to you right, if you are very close to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So for us as Muslims, we must emulate that. So you must ask yourself, how are you with your parents? How are you with your siblings? Right, are you like that with your colleagues? You know, at work. You know, or are you nicer to them right, than to your own siblings? You know, are you nicer to your? And for me, I'm also guilty. Sometimes our own siblings, we just don't care at all what we say to them. Eh? And we are very harsh to our siblings. We, we, we don't care about their feelings. We just take their stuff. No, no, please, thank you, whatsoever. <laughs> just agreeing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the siblings, you know, a different face altogether. <laughs> right, Ella, now I'm saying it out loud. Lah. Now you can call me out on it. <laughs> you see, you say in class, right? <laughs> Supposed to be the best to your family. <laughs> Yeah lah, so when you teach everybody, you might teach your siblings, right? <laughs> Claim time. <laughs> yeah lah, I mean, that's the way Rasul Sam was, right? The closer people who were, to, were to him, the better he was to them. Right? And those who are hypocrites, the, f- the further people are from them, the nicer they are to them. Right? Those are hypocrites. It means the closer people are to you, the worse you are in your akhlaq to them. It's a very strong sign of hypocrisy. Right, if you find yourself uh, so sweet words with everybody else, but with your own parents, you are you snap. Right, or with your own spouses, you snap. You don't care. 
right? Snap, snap. Not slap. <laughs> slap teruah. <laughs> Snap. That means that your, your own spouse says to you do something. Doan. The kind of thing, you know, Doan, you do yourself. Ah. Like, you know, like, you, you snap at your spouse, you know, or your, 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 your parents. I do something. Later. Ah. You know, that's how you answer. But your, for example, your boss. Does you do something? Okay. You know, at your service. Marhaban. <laughs> you know, like in a way. Like you can say that to your boss. Like, but to your parent, later, ah, ask somebody else. Ah. I'm, I'm, I'm busy, you know, I'm busy. You know, like you show like a very... You show, you show no akhlaq whatsoever and you show a lot of... You're, you're so annoyed. You show a lot of annoyance right, whenever they ask something of you. Right? That shows bad akhlaq. Right? It shows bad akhlaq. Right? And the akhlaq, it is the akhlaq of the hypocrite. The hypocrite does that. Right. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Second attribute already on here. Eh? <laughs> right, a lot of things already now on our, on our, on our shoulders. <laughs> Want to emulate Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Yes, inshallah we can emulate him. Right, slowly. Right, Faiza has done our our homework again. It's not ready, not. Okay, because every part I'm gonna assign homework to people. Okay, so at least because this entire book right, is a book of of, of practice, right, and, and because there's so much information in the book that you get lost, right? Because you take one thing and you leave the other thing, you take one thing, the other thing. So if everything is out in poster form, right, you have everything in front of you, uh, and then you can remind yourself easily. Right, on what you have learned in this book. Right, so every section, it will have homework eh, for different, not the same people, different people. But it's not like, same people. <laughs> Ken, do you open over again? <laughs> right, I mean, you will see the, the first example that you all have an idea of what, what I mean. Right, what I want. Okay? Then if you spread this and you keep quoting the book, I quote the book on your poster. Right? Uh, quote it. Quote the book and the share. Right? Uh, and then, so people can actually refer. If they want more information, refer. Right? If they want classes, then you can actually put a class on the, not on the poster itself, right? but you can put it like on the, when you share on Facebook or so, you put it aside if you want to. Yeah, so that people can have, they have more access right, to these things if they want to. Otherwise, if you have no time for book, no class, they can see the poster and then they, they understand from it. Yeah, I've seen it. It's good. It's well done. Yeah. So it should, be, it, should be easily, it should be easily spread by Instagram, by Facebook right, and WhatsApp. It should be easily spread. It's like, oh, da'wah Allah, da'wah efforts. Right, so you're all doing da'wah. <laughs> uh, and when you do it, you memorize it already. Or you spend the whole time doing it, right? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I should do it for all my classes, eh? Make everybody do a section. <laughs> they make you all memorize stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, the third attribute of so so is he becomes more beloved to add to people around him more than their own parents even and more beloved than their own children and from cold water to a thirsty person and you know if you're in your fasting on a very hot day like how you know how beautiful it is to break your fast on cold water that means you have no no patience for dates also some people like they're so hot and so thirsty then when they break their fast they're like ah eat the dates eat the dates <laughs> and you should force yourself eat the dates sunna do the dates <laughs> and then you, huh? <laughs> can lah I'm like cannot of course the dates are first right but if you're like if, if you <laughs> so you gulp the water then you take the dates is it <laughs> So you can drink our water. <laughs> right, but you know, on those kind of days, the cold water comes and it just, it won't even reach your stomach, it just goes into your chest. <laughs> right? like it's, it's, it's so hot, the cold is... <laughs> you're not even reaching your stomach. That's, that's what it means here. That he becomes more beloved right? than uh, thirsty, than, than the cold water to a thirsty person. And doing the sunnah is a sign of that. When you do the sunnah of the dates before the cold water, you are showing that you love Rasulullah more than your cold water. <laughs> but if you need to do the cold water first, that means oh, your love for Rasulullah is a bit down from the cold water. The cold water is more beloved <laughs> than the than the dates, right? So you need to hold yourself. Don't take the don't take the cold water. Don't even put it out. Just take the dates first. <laughs> even if it's cold Bandung, like don't. Cold Bandung cannot resist, eh? Cold Bandung at, at Buka Puasa on a hot day. And when you break your fast, if Cold Bandung, it's just like... <laughs> put it aside, take the dates, you know, honour the Sunnah, then you can have your, your Bandung. <laughs> Alright, third attribute. Alright. Husnul Qubul. Alright, Husnul Qubul, right, uh, he, he has good acceptance of people. Right? 
This quality attracts and causes heart to incline in one's favor, with the result that people hasten in obedience and submission. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam captivated the hearts of people. His companionship was so firmly embedded in their minds that even the most obstinate and distant from him would not feel estranged. Exceptions to this were, of course, those who were driven by malice to distress him, and those who opposed him due to being deprived of guidance. Right, so the third attribute of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they're very excited over there. <laughs> huh? They're building a house. You know. <laughs> Adam gets very excited. It's always his voice I hear. Adam. <laughs> right, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you're wondering what's the front page about, you're wondering, eh? It's from a hadith. If you're wondering this thing, it's a hadith. It's from a hadith. There was once, yes, Rasulullah sallam, you can find it in Rasulullah sallam, right? Uh, anyway, it's explained here. If you're, if you're bo- uh, bothered reading, <laughs> it's behind. <laughs> See about the cover. It's right there. <laughs> you, you, do you all ever wonder why is the picture even like that? Yeah. Because you were looking at it. And I was like, I was like, didn't you all read the back? <laughs> okay, basically it's a Mahari versus Sassam. Right, whereby he drew, he was with the Sahabas one day. And this is when we go into the teaching methods. That of teaching methods is to do, use diagrams. Because there are some used diagrams in, in his time. But what would he do? He would draw on the sand. Right? So you would say like PowerPoint, diagrams, board. These are all part of the sunnah. Right? Because he would actually explain to the sahaba using diagrams. So this hadith is actually basically, he drew four squares. There are many different narrations of what this hadith was. Some say it was within the square. Some say it came out of the square. Right? So Allah Alam, here he drew it out of the square. Right? So, so he drew a square. Right? And he says this square... Is the life of the human being. It means your, to, to explain to the Sahabas the matter of our life. I will go back to this in a while. This, the, 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 the cover is interesting. And I said, this square, so you draw on, on the floor. Right? This square is the life of the human being. Right? Then he drew a straight line out. Right? And this straight line that goes out of the square, the, this is his hope. Hopes are his hopes. He has a lot of hopes. You hope to to grow old. You hope to you know uh, have many children. You hope to you know be a millionaire. You hope to hopes the hopes of the human being. It goes way past his ajal. Right, this is his ajal. His hopes are there, right? right the hadith goes that and then he begins to draw lines, right, at the past of the hopes. Right, the the narrations that say the lines were actually within the square, and right? not outside. Here he drew it outside. Allahu alam. You know, you do it in the If you open up any, any book of the Salihin, the drawing is there. Imam Nawawi actually drew drawings in the Salihin. When the Sahabas passed down, they also drew it down. Uh, so, so to show, show the Tabi'in how it was drawn. And it was passed down. So, if you, if you open, open any book of the Salihin, which I have in my cupboard, if you want to go and see. It's all, there are a few different drawings. Uh, different Sahabas narrate different things. Uh, maybe he did it more than once. Lah. You know, Allahu alam. Uh, so, these lines uh, are basically things that occur in your life. Right. So, so while the human being is in his lifespan, he has all these hopes, right? And the hopes begin during his lifespan, right? And he says that if this, so, and, and this, this are you would say like 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 um, barriers, they are like barriers to your to achieving your hope. So if this hope does not get him, this will get him. If this doesn't get him, this will get him until his life will get him, before he actually reaches his uh, hope. <laughs> Right, so it's to explain to the, to the Sahaba that you you all you know have you, you you look so far, right, to what you want in life that you don't see that your life is very short. It's not that you don't you should not have all this kind of you know high hopes. And even if you want, if you can reach there, right, even if your ajal is not the one that will st- will stop you from 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 hoping for these things, there will be things in between that will cause you to stop hoping. Right, and if you don't pay attention, you just die. Trying to achieve your hopes <laughs> right, in life. I right, mean, your, 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 your hopes in life, lah, whatever it is. The, the hadith is very long right, about, about what uh, Rasulullah actually drew and to explain to the Sahaba what this was about. Inshallah, if you're anything to the hint, I'll get into that. <laughs> it's one of the hadiths there. Right, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's 
Yeah. So the solihin is a, uh, but it's very heavy. Eh, if you're going to do the solihin on Afak, the website, very heavy. Because it's, it's twice a week. It's two hours per lesson. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't. I cannot. I'm supposed to do one and a half hours. <laughs> yes, it's a year four topic. And twice a week. <laughs> you have to imagine what what is the preparation time for it, right? If the if the class time is two hours, prepare for the class. It's alhamdulillah, but it's it's it's, it's delightful. Where the solution is delightful. It's really it's an amazing book that everyone should really go through. <laughs> Riyadu Salihin But it's a thick book uh. It's thick book Year 4 I know it's year 4 <laughs> You'll get there You'll get there <laughs> Alright Alhamdulillah Okay uh, Masayana Muhammad Alright So the third So the third attribute Is Husnul Al-Qabul uh, Husnul Al-Qabul Meaning that He he is very warm Towards people uh, You know He really fully Accepts people uh, The way they are so you don't, you know, make judgments on people. You don't shun people. You don't, uh, uh, you know, uh, distinguish or you don't dif- uh, discriminate between people. And so Rasulullah he had that attribute that to the point every Sahaba felt that he was the most beloved to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and because of how he would always, you know, of his physical characteristics, he would always turn to them full body, and he won't just turn his head. And he would turn them. I find, it, I find it's a very hard sunnah to follow. And if someone, if you're walking and someone calls you. To do it, do it this way. All of us just do it this way, right? He will turn his whole body around. <laughs> right, so if, if you want to emulate that sunnah, you know, or you're, you're doing your work and your child calls you, you turn your whole body around. <laughs> or you're cooking or something, you turn the whole body around. So I know, it's one of the, I find it one of the hardest sunnahs to remember to do. Because you might, you might, you, it's you not know, on impulse, you just turn your head. Right, you turn the whole body. So I know. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, they do it. I've seen them. They, they, will, they will turn their whole body. But it's training. Like, I think you have to really be conscious of the moment. And right? that you that you, you know, to stop yourself from turning the head. <laughs> but I find it one of the it's an, it's a, it's a very, one of the very amazing sunnas. You would even think you'll be a sunnah. And right? to actually, you know, what's wrong with turning my head? You would you would think, you know, what's wrong with turning my head? But to give someone the full attention and respect that they have. And for us, we're using our phone and talking to people. <laughs> and we're not even, we're not even, you know, <laughs> turning our whole bodies. We are still there doing something else and doing something else to, to, when people are talking to us. Alhamdulillah. Right. So, so, and because of that, because of that, uh, people's hearts are attracted, right? And they are inclined towards Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And because of that, they hasten to obey him uh, and to submit to his commands, right? Because he gives everybody their time. And everybody, they're right. So everybody feels important to him. And you try doing that if you're children. You know, if you, if you, if you give them attention, you know, in, in, in a healthy way, a right, healthy attention, right, that, you, that you listen to them, what they have to say, you know, but not, not attention in a way by you praise, praise, praise. Right, attention in a way by you listen. Right, and, and they want to show you something they drew, right, or something that, or the story that they want to tell you whatsoever, that you actually allow your ears right, to be focused on them. And you, oh, really? And you ask them questions about it. And then what happened? And the wolf do what? What did the wolf do? Oh, and then how can he be that way? And then you show so much, you know, like, like interest in what they're trying to say <laughs> and to you. If you build this as they grow up, and they will begin to, uh, to have a lot of respect and, and reverence for you. And then obedience comes easily. And obedience actually comes easily. And of course, this is the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he will give everybody their respect, and they will in turn respect him. Right. So it's, it's, it's a it's, it's a two way thing. Right. So then, therefore, his companionship is so f- or so firmly embedded in their minds that even the most obstinate and distant of him from him right, would not feel strange. Right. Exceptions were of course there. Are. There were of course the disbelievers or the munafik, right, who were people who already had disease in their hearts, so they, they refused to obey Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right. But most of them, right, even when initially. They did not love Rasulullah at all, or they hated Rasulullah. You know of the of the companion Fudala, right? Fudala, uh, the, he was a disbeliever who who planned to stab Rasulullah so Islam when Rasulullah was doing tawaf around the Kaaba. Uh, he planned to stab, so he had he had a dagger that was uh, that had that had poison on it, right? a dagger with poison, and it was in his coat. So Rasulullah was doing tawaf, and he fought someone from the back with his dagger. 
Right? And some, of course, was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about this man behind him who wants to stab him and kill him. So as he, as he was doing his tawaf, right, every now and then he would stop and he would turn to the man. Right? And he would, when he turns, he would turn his full body right, to the man and he would say, What are you doing, Fudala? And what are you saying to yourself? And Fudala would say, I'm just doing zikr. I'm doing tawaf and I'm doing zikr. That's what I'm doing. And he would smile. Then he would turn back and continue his tawaf. Right? And then uh, after a while, he would stop, turn again, because Fudala would be behind him. Then again and say, what are you saying to yourself, Allah? And the entire time, the man, we know who he was, he had his dagger in his, in his, in his clothing with poison. And he, he said he hated Rasulullah so much. There was nobody that he hated more right, than Rasulullah Wasallam, And he wanted to kill Rasulullah Wasallam, you know, during the tawaf. And Rasulullah turned to him and said, what are you, talking, what are you saying to yourself, Allah? And Allah said, nothing, I'm doing zikir and I'm doing tawaf. Nothing, nothing, nothing going on. Right? And some, he smiled. And he turned back and he continued his tawaf. So the third time, he stopped. Right? And then he turned in his full body again and turned to Fudala. So giving him his full attention. And said, Fudala, what are you saying to yourself? Right? And then Fudala said, nothing. I'm just doing zikr of Allah and I'm doing the tawaf. Because he was pretending to be Muslim, this Fudala. So then Rasulullah Wasallam he, he took his hand right? and he placed his hand on the chest of Fudala. Right? Under which was the dagger. The dagger was there. <laughs> he placed it there, right? And then he removed his hand. Right? And then Fudala said that the moment he placed his hand on me, right? Before he put his hand on me, he was the most hateful person to me in this world. I didn't hate any more, anyone more than the Prophet. But when he placed his hand on me and he removed his hand, he was the most beloved person to me on this earth. I mean, there's something that some we, we, we would do, you know. But you know, you you don't even you know accuse him of anything. I know he have a dagger. You know, Allah told me <laughs> nothing. You know, he of course he knows he's a dagger there. He knows he's a dagger there, right? But the point is not to accuse him, right? or to to blame him, or to bring him. But probably his hatred is because of what he heard that is not true. That's all, right? And 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 many people in our time are like that. They hate. Islam or they hate Rasul Islam or they hate all these things because of misinformation like Fudala like Fudala so what do they need? they need somebody to be like Rasul Islam to treat them with mercy and kindness right? and not to, to blame them you know for the ignorance that they are in right? they are ignorance because of our fault that we are not teaching them <laughs> right? so, no, so they need, we need more hands like the hands of Rasul Alaihi Wasallam right? who will touch people with mercy and kindness right? and they win over their hearts and they begin to love Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi right, uh, more than anything in this world. And so you see, this is, this is what it's called hus- husnul al-qubul. Al- 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 it means to really accept people, and right, to understand people and to accept them. And by that, they, they, become, they, become submit, they become submissive to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they become obedient to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alright, the fourth attribute, the inclination of people to follow him, their ready acceptance of his resolutions, and their steadfastness in the face of in the face of the hardships and torments which they experience before because of him, no sincere individual or companion isolated himself from him. And the fourth attribute of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi is something that is that is uh, sincerely to, sincerely to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whereby people would do whatever you know it takes of them for the sake of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they would sacrifice themselves and their wealth and their family they don't you know they would give whatever they have right, to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he himself would give whatever he had right, for the benefit of the entire ummah right, so, the, so he was very sacrificing right, with, the, with his ummah and the and the sahaba right, they themselves right, they would they would be very sacrificing to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam right, so they would follow him they would accept whatever he would say that his followers right, and, and uh, of the disbelievers who said that when they went to see the Sahabas with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right, when they were at Hudaybiyah right, and they were, they were stuck there. Right, so they came to Mecca during, the, during one of the uh, incidences in the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They came to Mecca. And so it, so Sirah is very important. When you look at Sirah, you understand a lot of things. Right, from the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when they came to Hudaybiyah and they were supposed to do their Umrah, right, they were supposed to do their Umrah and they were all like in Ihram and whatsoever, the disbelievers of Mecca stopped them. Right, because they were at war right, and you can't come, you can't come from Umrah right, because we were supposed to be fighting each other. 
Right, so even though they came with ihram and they had no weapons on them except what is you know necessary, right? And they showed that they only came in peace. They didn't come to fight. They went to their umrah and leave. Right, but the Quraysh stopped them at Hudaybiyah right, and said, "No, you cannot enter, right? Because you know, uh, we are at war. Right, it's ridiculous for our enemies to enter into our town." Right, so so what happened was that I mean it's a long story, right, but all the things that happened in 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 that period was that the disbelievers would send their own spies. Right to the Muslim uh, encampment outside of Mecca, and they would watch the Muslims, right? and and of them who would, who would say that I have seen and it was uh, if, I'm not, if I'm not wrong Abu Sufyan, or one of the or Sufwan, one of the disbelievers who became Muslim thereafter. Right? He said that I have seen the kings of Rome and the kings of Persia, and I have seen the subjects of this king and how they are to them. And as you know, as, as a king, people serve you when they pamper you, when they obey your orders and whatsoever. But he said he has never seen anyone treat their leader the way the companions of Muhammad treat Muhammad. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yeah, Muhammad. <laughs> right? they, they have never, they have never seen anybody uh, in this entire world, even in Rome or in Persia, the big empires. Nobody. Has ever treated their leader the way the companions of Rasulullah Sallam treated Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Whereby they would rush to get his hair, they would rush to take his wood water and wipe on their bodies, right? They would rush to 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 do all they could, right, to serve Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So this is one of the uh, attributes of Rasulullah Sallam that no sincere individual companion, right, could stay away from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So these four attributes are required for success, and they are the tenets of prophethood. All prophets actually have them, but they are the most, uh, the, the strongest uh, and the most perfect in Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right? They were found to perfection in Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as we just mentioned, and he fulfilled their requirements perfectly and appropriately. Right? This was the first part of how you know he was with the people. Right? So for us, what we can what we can emulate uh, is basically. Right, the first one, Sakina. Right, try to be composed. Right, don't be somebody who is you know, high strung. Right, that is so hard to live with you. Everything also angry. Everything also ah uh, uptight. Yeah, you know. Yeah, uptight. I mean, don't be so. Don't be so difficult, lah. Eh? <laughs> People can't even do anything around you. That whatever they do is wrong. You know, like they can't even make mistakes. They can't even. You know, like some people, they, you do something. You know, then they get upset, angry, whatever. Right, don't be that. Right, be easy. Uh, be easy on the people. Everything is fine, right? And then uh, uh, cheerfulness, right? We can emulate that. Right? Be cheerful. Right? Don't be sour. Right? If you are someone who is naturally always sour, <laughs> right? or don't be grumpy. Grumpy is not a trait of a believer. <laughs> so I myself also you know, don't be grumpy. To not be grumpy to people. I used to be very grumpy. <laughs> Hopefully not grumpy anymore. <laughs> right? I mean, don't be like sour. Bachelor. <laughs> yeah, la, I mean, grump, grump, grumpy is like a grouch. So, like, people come and interact with you, you just you snap at people, you growl at them. <laughs> You're not in the mood to do anything. That is, that is human, la. of course, it's human to not be in the mood for stuff. No, grumpy is that you actually show negative behavior, right? So, like for example, if you're grumpy, right? Someone was someone, I don't know, masam, yeah. Example of grumpy. You're <laughs> grumpy today. You try to control that. Ah, uh, you're supposed to control that jihad. It's a jihad. Fight against the grump. <laughs> It's not grumpy, lah. Like. Quiet. That means you're just tired. Grumpy is that like you're frowning. You're frowning. <laughs> yeah, lah. But and go and recharge. She do sip sip for a while. Go and recharge your battery. But it's better to be to show a cheerful front, right? Yeah. Yes. 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 Force it out and make it the real the reality that is within. That means when you force it out, you force yourself to be cheerful, 
you will eventually be cheerful. Right? And then it's today's one of, of the hadith of Rasulullah Ah, you know, tah, if you don't have hilm, tahallum. That means you, if you're not, if you're not uh, forbearing, force forbearing. Force it. <laughs> if you're not humble, force humility. Pretend, it, pretend to be. It's better for you to pretend to be humble than to go around arrogant. Right? So even if you're arrogant inside, pre- force the humility. Force yourself to be humble. Even if you're not somebody who is, who is uh, forbearing you know, or, or calm, force it. <laughs> force yourself to be calm. Uh, even if you're not, until the character becomes of you. Until, so so it's, it's, that's the way you, you, actually, you actually get good character. You force it until it becomes part of you. I tell you, it is tried, proven, tested. You, that is the only way by which you can improve your character. It means you force it on yourself until you actually have it. Okay. So, of, of humbleness, if you are, of, of a trace of humbleness, is to say sorry. Right? And even if you're not at fault. And of course, you're always, there's always some fault somewhere. Okay? You can't say, I'm never at fault. You, I mean, you're not the prophet. Right? You're a human being. There could be some fault in the tone of voice, right? in your facial expression, in your lack of uh, uh, attention, in your whatever. There could, there could be something that you did, you know, something you didn't even notice. So, of humility is to just stop and say, apologize. Even though it's not your character to do so at all. And you just you refuse to do it, right? but you force it. You break it right? for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, they say, you know, whatever character you want, you force it onto yourself. You must force. Right? And even even and it's not a hypo, it's not it's not hypocrisy in any way because it's from a hadith. Right? And also in the hadith, then when you read the Quran, cry. And if you can't cry, then force yourself to cry. I mean, so you're not supposed to force yourself to cry when you the Quran. Because your heart is so hard, you're not crying. So you're gonna force yourself right, to cry so in hope that one day your heart actually breaks. You know, and your heart actually becomes soft towards the Quran. Right, so it's it's a, it's not a hypo, it's not something that is hypo, hypocritical. Right, it is hypocritical if you are doing it to show off. Right, that is hypocritical. Right, if you if you're being humble or you're crying in the Quran because you want to show off. Right, but if but and you know when you're showing off and you're not showing off. Right, when you are showing off, people are there lah. Right, then you begin to try to cry in the Quran. When you're by yourself, you couldn't care less. You wouldn't even read in the Quran when you're by yourself. Right, that's even worse. Right. Yesterday, the Sheikh, we were talking about one Sheikh uh, from Syria. He asked us, what's the difference between Riya and Nifaq? Right, the difference between uh, showing off and hypocrisy. And because he was talking to us about the diseases of da'wah. <laughs> it, was a very good, it was a very good talk yesterday with the Sheikh. The diseases of da'wah. Right, so he says, and even the diseases ah, of, da- of that one, you know, the dais, you know, all of you, <laughs> right? Because it was a gathering of uh, ustazat, right? uh, female ustazat basically, uh, and it was in Arabic, lah. there was no, no transition, so they didn't open it up, right? So what is a, a gathering? It wasn't like a talk whatsoever, right? So he said, uh, okay, we know about hypocrisy and we know about um, Ria. What's the difference? Is there a difference? And Ria means to show off. Hypocrisy is hypocrisy. What's the difference between Riyah and hypocrisy? Hmm. Difference. Similarity got, got similarity lah. Right? The hypocrite does have Riyah. <laughs> right? But there is a difference between hypocrisy and Riyah. Yes, on the on point, Faiza. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, riak, riak, riak. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So basically, Ria, right? Ria, you you're doing it to be seen, right, and to be praised. There is a possibility you're doing it for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. There is, right? But you like, you so you sure you want to pray. And you're praying your sunnah, you're doing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you like people seeing you pray. Ah, that is Riyah. Right? Of course, what that means will be, you, you are street, you're still a believer. You're, you're, you're a good believer, you want to pray and stuff like that. Right? But your, your, your reward could be zero. That's what could be on you. You have zero reward. <laughs> right? because, because you are uh, pleased. That means you get, your reward is in people praising you. That is your reward. Right, it means on in the akhirah no reward. 
for ya for ya hypocrisy ah uh, hypocrisy even worse hypocrisy you are not even having ong law in your mind at all because ong law is not even in the picture whatsoever hypocrisy is you're doing it uh you you are you are you are a worshipper of yourself that is hypocrisy that means you are cafe in that way that means you worship the self right so it means you show off so there is a showing off going on right but inwardly you have no focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatsoever and that's a hypocr- that's a hypocrite that means inwardly they are devoid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so of course all of the actions thereafter will all be riya it will all be riya so so every hypocrite will have riya but not everyone who has riya is a hypocrite you understand and so every hypocrite will have riya right because riya means to do it for the sake of, of people right so so hypocrites they don't even have Allah in their lives they even look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Right, there, there's such hypocrites. Right, that is a hypocrite. But a normal Muslim or believer who is focused on Allah subhanahu wa taala can have riyah. Right, when you do your deeds in front of other people and you feel proud when they praise you. Right, so, so you still do it anyway, and you fight your nafs. You fight. Your, you force it, and you fight your nafs. Right, uh, and you scold your nafs about it. Right, so you don't feel safe in your nafs. That oh, I'm not doing it out of riyah. No, you are doing out of Riyadh. Tell yourself, it is all Riyadh. It's all Riyadh. You better start through law a lot after this. All right, that kind of thing. Okay. So, I mean, interesting lah. Of course, he goes through the diseases of 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 uh, <laughs> the the Da'i. Because <laughs> it's, it's one of the most dangerous positions right, to actually uh, begin to preach. Because, right? I mean, all, shaitan, shaitan comes to you in all directions to destroy you right, in, in the way you are. Alhamdulillah. All right. So, uh, Masayna Muhammad. Right, uh, it's two o'clock. Let's see. Okay, so we are done with the first with the first perfection. Second one is the perfection of character, which has six attributes. Right, I'll go through briefly in summary. Then in the next lesson we'll go in detail, right, about the six attributes of a uh, perfect character. All right. So perfection in character. Rasulullah Islam's perfect character consists of six attributes. The first one, mental composure, correct thinking, accurate foresight. Right? Second one, remaining firm and resolute when his enemies search for him. And he is remaining patient at times of adversity, apprehension and war. Right? So the first one is basically, it is a follow-up of the first attribute from just now. Of the physical, it means the just now one was he is tranquil in his physical self. Here he is tranquil in his uh, intellectual self, right? That means that is his compose, his compose, his composure, correct thinking, and foresight. He was able to judge things well. So they come hand in hand. The first attribute just now, and this attribute they come hand in hand, right? And then uh, second attribute, right? To be firm and resolute, right? Uh, against the enemies and to be patient. Right. Patience is one of the greatest attributes. Whoever has been given patience, he has been given a light. Right? Patience is a light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's also from a hadith in the Sulihin. You can find it there. Right? Was sab- was sabrul, uh, no, no, sabrul diya is the hadith. Eh? It's a long hadith. It's a long hadith about it. Right? And patience is a light. Right? Why is it a light? Because it guides you on the path. And when you're able to have patience, we'll go into it a bit more next next lesson. The third attribute, right, is ab- abstention right, and diving from the world and it's contentment with the barest minimum. This is a very important attribute. Very, very important attribute of good character. Someone who does not chase after the dunya because some said that every wrong deed is based on love of this world. Every wrong deed. Finds its source in the love of this world, right? So, if somebody and and nobody can deny that. So you can't say that. Oh no, no, no! I need this, this dunya, f- you know, whatsoever. I'm not. It's not. It's not a bad thing, right? The way the the fact that Rasulullah Sallam himself has uh he has denied himself of the dunya, and he is the last person to even be any in any way attached to the dunya, and right? that shows that for us to follow him, we need to actually detach. And from our dunya, and not chase this dunya, and be easily, you know, be make it easy on yourself to give right, of your wealth. All right. So it, uh, so so staying away from this dunya is a is a, is 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 a virtue. Right? It is a virtue. Zuhud is a virtue. Right? Staying away from the beautifications right, of this world is a virtue. Right? In Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, you go. Uh, next week we'll we'll explain further. Eh? 
The fourth one is humility, humbleness. Right, humbleness is the trait of our religion. Right, there's a hadith where Rasulullah says that every religion has a character, and the character of Islam is humbleness. Right, and if anyone was to to contend that and say no, 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 we humbleness shows weakness. No, right, our Prophet was the most humble of people and the strongest of people. Right, because strength is what strength is in. Uh, doing what is right in the face of wrong, like confidence, same thing. Right, that is strength. Uh, you have the strength to actually get up, pull off your covers, go and pray. Right, when you, when you need to pray. Right, uh, or you have the strength to go go and fast. You need to fast. You have the strength to obey Allah subhanahu. You need to obey Allah subhanahu wa taala. Right, and some say that strength is not the one who is able to wrestle. Right, but strength is the one who is able to control himself in the face of anger. Right, that is strength. Right, so we're going to see strength. Uh, uh, and humility in Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? And the last one, forbearance, him. These are what the scholars have said of what encompasses good character. There's the one more, eh? fifth and sixth, right? Uh, what encompasses good character, right? So I will, I will mention it again after the number six one. The sixth one is that he fulfills promises and covenants. That means he's not a liar. So integrity, right? Him, which is forbearance, right? Means uh, good naturedness, that him. Right, so uh, integrity, good naturedness or forbearance, humility, right, patience, uh, zuhud, staying away from the world, right, and being mentally composed. Right, that means having a sound mind right, in how you judge things. Right, these are the six uh, major points, right, in what defines someone as having good character. Right, so you see, so when you learn, when you want to learn all these things, you just Open up any book on, about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you see it all there. It's all there. So no one, no one can even argue with you, right? It's it's just there. It is obviously, it's from Rasulullah Sallam. The, the, the scholars have mentioned it. Imam Ghazali in his Ehya is all there, right? Uh, Imam Al Haddad in his book is all there. It's the same thing over and over again, right? But we just don't, don't seem to get it, <laughs> right? That what do you do if you're a good character? Be calm in your thinking, right? Be mentally composed. Be firm and patient, right? Uh, uh, stay away from this dunya, right? Have humility, have helm, you know, have, have forbearance, right? And have integrity, be honest, right? Do not uh, uh, break your word when it comes, when, 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 you, when you make promises to people. So inshallah, we will go through that next time round, right? This part is like really mashallah. The, he's not going through any hard he's just, he's just laying out for us. So that also has to be another homework, eh? To lay out for us the perfect attributes of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right, and then... Huh? Later on, later on, later on. Once I'm done with it... Yeah, but once I'm done with it, you can do the entire thing all in one go. Or and do it in separate, separate posters, eh? Yeah, and do the whole thing in one go, eh? Yeah, and then you, you, need, you should do like a... You know what you should do? Right, we're going to pause there. You should, you should do like a... Um, hashtag. So people can follow the series. Yes. Right. So and if it could be Yeah. Okay, we think about it. Like, so 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 like I can put on our Facebooks lah. Right. But if so people will know where to look for it if they're following the series. Hashtag series lah. Right. So the the first is the first hashtag, you know, uh, of fact teaching whatsoever. Right. So the law is you know. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم في كل لحظه ابدا على خلقه ورضى نفسه وسنه عرشه مداد كلماته الفاتحه ان الله يرزقنا علما نافعا وعمل خالص مقبول حسن التعاليم ودلاله على الهدى ويصلي بقول النبي صلى الله عليه واله وصحبه وسلم والى معلمينا مشايخنا وَذَوِي الْحَقُوقِ عَلَيْنَا وَإِلَىٰ حَطَنَا بِسْرِ اللَّهِ وَسَمَّ الْفَاتِحَةِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر
سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه الحمد لله رب العالمين So you see the back of the book there? They uh, they put the hadith there. The hadith is there. About the drawing in front. Huh? 